If you're a baseball fan, there's no better time of the year than springtime, Easter holiday. We trust you've had a, a very, very good holiday. My name is Darren Sutton. We're devoted to amateur baseball. This is Perfect Game Weekly presented by Rawlings. A deep dive, a scouting deep dive, a historical deep dive on three athletes that hope to be taking their journeys to college baseball and professional baseball. Out of Southern California, one of the best middle infielders in the land, 2022 Mikey Romero. Out of Florida, a young man who's going to have a tough decision to make. Is it off to South Carolina? Is it into pro baseball to draft? He will have his name called a 2022 Ethan Petrie, who is out of Florida. And out of Texas, catcher Masa Chilcutt. This is a talented 2025. How did he arrive at this spot? We'll find out about his gifts and how he takes them out to the baseball field. Let's head to the Eastern Seaboard. We love to go road tripping. We'll put our cameras, put our scouts, put everybody to work, find the best stories and best players. Let's plug in, let's gas up. Here we go. We'll start up north in Andover, Massachusetts. That's a number three overall, 2023 Thomas White. The big left-hander opened up his junior season at Phillips Academy exactly where you'd expect over the weekend. Four hitless innings, eight strikeouts, and a two-to-one win over Bridgeton Academy. Thomas recently took his name off of that top uncommitted list and announced he'll be joining number one overall, 2023 Max Clark, at Vanderbilt, down the I-95 corridor to the Bronx. It's opening day. It's Red Sox and Yankees. And the 03 World Showcase standout, Josh Donaldson, putting an exclamation point on his Yankee debut. The walk-off single in the 11th scored Isaiah Connor falefa and completes the comeback to beat the Sox 6-5. It's the Yankees' first opening day walk-off win since 1957. The winning run that day, Yogi Berra. 225 miles south of Yankee Stadium sits Prince George's Stadium, home of the Orioles AA affiliate Bowie Bay Sox. On Sunday, 2017 Perfect Game National Showcase alum Hudson Haskin put on a show. Not one, not two, but three home runs in an 11-6 win over Richmond. He had only five homers all of last year. The hat trick Sunday should help him soar way past those numbers in 2022. Let's go 300 miles southwest to Cary, North Carolina, the National High School Invitational. The number five team in the land out of Florida, Stoneman Douglas, erupted for a 10-run third inning and run ruled the three-time defending champion and number one team, by the way, out of California, the Orange Lutheran Lancers in the semifinal on Friday night, en route to taking home the title on Saturday. By the way, on Tuesday, Stoneman Douglas, not a big surprise, took over the number one spot in the country. Congrats to the Eagles. Yankees, Red Sox, Phillies, Mets. Yes, that's great, but there's a ton of grit in the amateur game along the Eastern Seaboard. Love that part of the road trip, getting to know the Eastern Seaboard athletes. When we come back, speaking of grit, you've got to have it to be a catcher, and Masa Chilcutt does. The talented 2025, not out of the Eastern Seaboard, but out of Texas, shares how he does what he does, and in the process, catches the eye of so many evaluators, college coaches, pro scouts, This is Perfect Game Weekly. We're presented by Rawlings. We welcome you back to Perfect Game Weekly presented by Rawlings. If you've ever watched this show, you know this former minor league pitcher has an incredible soft spot for catchers. Their leadership, their ability to impact the game, the ability to play every day, beating their body up more than anybody else. That's why we need to get to know one. How about 2025 San Antonio, Texas native Masa Chilcutt? Hey, look, it's been our pleasure to know the young man and his gifts. Now all the evaluators, scouts, beyond perfect game folks are getting to know who he is. A two-time select festival athlete, a man who certainly can change the game with his bat, but it's his glove and his catching ability that has really caught everyone's eye. Masa, how do you do what you do? We found out at the recent Perfect Game main event showcase. Hi, I'm Masa Chilcutt. My real name is Masato. Um, it's Japanese. Uh, my mom is Japanese. I feel like my communication is something that's big in catching. Uh, I feel like I'm in control when, I, when I'm a catcher, you know. Catcher is like a leader position, so I gotta be very vocal. When my pitcher's struggling, I like to call time, run up to him, maybe tell him something funny, get him to laugh, relax. Um, but I like to tell him, you know, like, hey, I'm gonna work for you. Just believe in me. Do what you do, and I and I got your back. So I usually just get right here. You know, it's an athletic position. If I need to go right, left, down, or if I need to jump up, you know, I feel like it's a very athletic position. And if he steals, it's a good position to 
you know, catch it and get ready to throw it. Footwork is really important in throwing, some, throwing a runner out because, um, you know, it's hard to throw a ball like this. So you got to make sure your feet are in a straight line to second base. You know, if it pitches out here, you like to, I like to step with my right foot, catch it, and I'm right here. Or if the pitch is over here, I kind of like move my back foot. It's very important to like get in this position every single time. I'm always thinking ball in the dirt. Whenever those runners on, you gotta you gotta anticipate it. So I usually work on it often. You know, I'll just my dad will just set up a machine, throw balls, and I'll just have to block them and stuff. I'm not sure the exact speed, but it's probably like high 80s. Sometimes we'll switch it to the curveball. The more you do it, it just becomes uh, like like nature. You know, and your body just moves on its own and just works. You know, I'm very active. I like moving very quick, um, communicating. You know, I'm just very active. I think that's what makes me a good catcher. So when I recently ran into Masa, I asked him a simple question. What will you be doing in 10 years when we bump into you? Without a beat, he said, I'll be making my major league debut, driving a ball into right center field and sliding in safe in the big leagues with my first triple. The kind of confidence that you love with an athlete, and especially with a catcher. With that in mind, let's bring in Jeremy Brown, Perfect Games National Cross Checker, and he handles so much at the 13-14 U Select Festival and Age Group. Jeremy, one player, Masa Chilcutt. You ready? I'm ready. All right, so here we go. When was the very first time you saw him? I know he's been fearless to play up, but when you saw him, what had you pause, stop, and want to see more? It was at during the 14U World Series two years ago down in Sanford, Florida at Boomba Complex. Just like we had seen the year prior at 13U with Kate Aaron Beatty playing up a year with Ray DeLeon, Masa was doing the same thing. And he was on the younger side already, but Ray let him get in. And behind the plate, he's moving around. He's athletic. He's agile. Things you don't see at the 13U level. And he, without any issue, made the transfer onto the Big Diamond for the 13U Select Festival. We actually took him as an infielder, just speaking to the athleticism, really good in the dirt. And then, of course, for the 14 year who's behind the plate putting on all the gear for us. So talk to me specifically about the bat, because obviously he can catch. You talk about his mobility, his confidence, but the bat, I'm sure, plays. Oh, yeah. it uh, It's all fields. He stays compact with what he does. I know he does a lot of tinkering at home. He's always in the cage. He's a cage rat, just loves the game of baseball, and will make the adjustments based off his performance as to what he needs to do in order to succeed in the next tournament, the next at-bat, the next game. So he's one that understands his swing, understands his body, knows how to repeat it, and is always looking to better himself every swing he takes. So for Masa Chilcutt, there's still one of those uncommitted, and you're the yeah. king of commitment. I mean, we know that. They come to you and they say, help us tell the world where we're going. <laughs> Any ideas? I don't know. He's got a slew of offers. I know he's got schools that he wants to go to, has favorites, and He's got plenty of time to kind of whittle it down and make his final decision. Dad, Mark, Mama Sato, great family at home with Masa Chilcutt. My friend, thanks for the insights. Absolutely. Thanks, Seth. We welcome you back to Perfect Game Weekly. We're presented by Rawlings. What a unique journey it's been for Ethan Petri, really jumping onto the ranks a couple of years back, but then at Perfect Games National Showcase, taking the next step forward. Follow it up in the fall and October. In Jupiter, Florida, his team, the champions, Ostinger's baseball, run by Jimmy Osting. And he does great work and really proud of the work he does at Cypress Creek High School. But that doesn't mean that he didn't want to improve upon his status in the eyes of scouts. He's going to South Carolina. That is for sure. They welcome his arrival next fall, but he hopes he can move up the draft ranks. That's why he recently attended Perfect Games World Showcase. My name is Ethan Petrie. I'm from Land Lakes, Florida. I'm committed to the University of South Carolina. Chris Wilkin and Jim Osting have really like pushed me and helped me strive for excellence. They've got me on the phone with uh, Mark Kingston, who's the head coach now at South Carolina. And he's a great, great guy. I mean, the atmosphere he puts over there is amazing. I mean, he just develops players and that's what I needed, you know, like, so I go to off to college for three years, I develop and I could possibly become a pro baseball player one day. 
Austin Riley and like Pete Alonso would be like my big, like guys that I like inspire me because like they're big guys like me and they like to hit and I love to hit, you know, and big strong frames who love to compete. At National, I didn't showcase as, as well as I expected, so I wanted to come out here and showcase that I'm actually better than what I was at National. I kept working on my footwork over the past couple months and just want to come out here and show I can throw it accurate, you know, because I was all over the place. My dad, after it, he was just like, you gotta relax, man. It's just, just one showcase is not gonna define you. You know, you got plenty of other things to look forward to. He's actually an elementary school principal. He's got a lot of good advice for kids, you know, like, he was a great principal. I mean, everyone still to this day in my high school are like, dude, your dad was the best principal ever. We always had a good relationship, you know, like he's always pushing me and striving for excellence, you know. Advice I would give players on this showcase is, is like, stay on the course. If you fail, you fail. You, there's gonna be plenty more opportunities and just gotta keep working. Work even harder if necessary and stay on course. Great stuff from the son of Jason and Kelly, who's always looking to up every part of his game. And speaking of the well-roundedness of his game, remember, as a sophomore in high school, he touched 88 as a pitcher as well. With that in mind, with that transition, it's appropriate to bring in National Scouting Director and a man who handles so much of Perfect Games college content, Vinny Servino. Hey, Vinny, one guy. You good with just one guy? Let's do it. All right, so the pitching thing is interesting because you have seen him very, very recently, and he didn't play third that day. You saw him on the mound. My goodness, I'm looking for a fresh report. Yeah, Ethan went and uh, just, you know, casually threw a complete game shutout against a very good high school team with probably around 40, 50 scouts in attendance. Uh, he was up 95 miles an hour, really good feel for a breaking ball. Some of the, uh, the finer... Uh, aspects of pitching are still kind of coming along, but it's obvious that he's put in a lot of work. And this is something I know he's been working really hard on over the last, you know, six, eight, nine months just to get him to where he is now as a prospect of the mound. All right, so I'm going to put you in three cubicles. You just did one. You did the pitching, which shocks some of the viewers of this show right out of the gates. The next part is the defense, the glove at third base, the athleticism, really. Uh, we don't have to specifically do defense, but athleticism defensively for, for Petri. Yeah, you know, obviously the arm strength plays from that side of the field. Um, he's he's a big kid. There's a lot of room there for, you know, what scouts call physical projection, uh, room to add size and everything. But he is pretty coordinated for his size and something that, you know, as he continues to develop and move down the line, should be a solid asset at third base, especially with that arm. Okay, so pitching, defense, bat. Tell us everything you can about his bat, maybe what you guys liked years ago, and how much he's progressed as well. Yeah, it's it's really easy power for Ethan. Um, it, it's a very short swing for somebody of his size and uh, the length of his leaders, you know, really long arms, long body. Uh, but it's really direct to contact. And uh, some, some of the underlying metrics, how hard he hits the ball are all positive signs and how well he can repeat that swing. And, really leads to believe that as it continues to go to player development and everything in a pro system, he can really unlock some big, big power. Great stuff, Vinny. Thanks for stopping by briefly and diving deep on one guy. A very interesting guy, by the way. Thanks for having me, Darren. When we come back, a wonderful journey. A man who has showed up at Perfect Games 14U Showcase several years back and has played himself into the first couple of rounds in the MLB Amateur Draft this summer. His name is Mikey Romero out of Southern California, Orange Lutheran, the LSU commit. And his story when we return on Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rollins. We welcome you back to Perfect Game Weekly presented by Rawlings. The journey of dreams coming true for some of the best athletes in the nation, like the hottest name in the rookie business, Royals third baseman Bobby Witt. He, of course, had a lengthy Perfect Game journey. Back in 2013, many of us remember when his mom, Lori, dropped him off in Grapevine, Texas, to be a part of his first ever PG event. That's right, 2013, nine years ago. The measurables, 5'3". 105 pounds. 
We hope we're saying the same thing about Mikey Romero, one of the best middle infielders in the 2022 class out of Orange Lutheran and an LSU commit. Mikey began his journey back in 2018 at a Perfect Game Regional 14U event. The very next year, we followed him to Jupiter, the Worldwood Bat Association World Championship, where his sister, a legendary softball star, four-time All-American, National Player of the Year, Sierra Romero, watched him hit. Let's go back, though, to 14-year-old Mikey Romero through the eyes of the Perfect Game cameras. My favorite thing at the Perfect Game Showcase this weekend was the variety of uh, players here from different states, you know, different heights, different ethnicities. Really good guys. The greatest influence in my baseball career has been my dad. He, he just always taught me to play the game the right way. He taught me how to compete. He taught me how hard I have to work to get to the point where I want to be. You know, when you have an off weekend, I think the best thing to do is help your team any way you can. Like, I haven't, I haven't had the best hitting weekend, but I for sure have been helping my team out on the field. Always picking up guys, making sure that they're working hard too. One of my favorite teammates has definitely been David Horn. He, he gets on me. He'll get on me when I'm not uh, hustling or maybe when I'm slacking a little bit. He'll get on me and he'll make sure that I'm, I'm 100%. That's what I like about him. Let's go, Mikey. We're fit. I go to the gym, uh, I go to a place called EM, definitely a really nice place. Um, I go to the gym with my dad, uh, we work on my arm, my legs, I do band work, I do my forearms, do my legs, just getting strong everywhere so I can have the best possible chance to compete at a high level. I remember when he was younger, he would be on YouTube all day, every day, just watching hitters, different hitters, watching defense. Um, I'd always ask him, like, hey, bud, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm watching baseball on YouTube. Let's see, he's going to get to hit. Here he goes. Very awesome. It's such an effortless swing, and he has so much power, and it's funny because he can be, totally be fooled, but he still finds a way to put the ball in play. How much do you guys talk hitting? He'll ask me questions about hitting, about defense when I'm home. He'll have me work on drills with him. Got a hit in his first at bat. Yep. Got the game winner the other night. Yeah. He was texting me about that. No interest in that one up. Nope. Nice cut. He's on that one. Yeah, he's on he it. He was on that one. A good player is always learning. You never have it all figured out. There's always room to improve. And I think that Mikey feels the same way because he's always trying to up his game. He was having trouble with his defense. So I start just rolling him ground balls because I wanted to look at his glove work and his footwork. I was like, dude, you're not moving your feet at all. Like, what are you doing? And I feel like he got kind of caught up in watching the MLB players. Finally, we started doing this like short hop drill where he has to read it. But I told him you have to let it bounce no matter what. But it was just cool because he, he came up to me and we're in the living room. He's like, Okay, I need help. Will you go always some ground balls? <laughs> and so we worked on it, and he's been doing really well. And that's a 15-year-old with some wisdom right there. Yeah. No, he's You're smart. smart. You he's go ask smart. the people that can help you. He's playing two years up in this tournament. These are all draft guys yeah. for next year. What do you remember about playing up, and how good do you think it is for him? I skipped uh, 16s and went straight to 18s. You have to change your mindset, and you have to play up. If you don't, you're gonna get passed. And so I feel like it, one, it makes him, makes him never settle. He needs to know what it's like to play at the next level, and he needs to make sure he can keep up with them and continue to work hard to be the best that he can be. By the way, let it be known, that 14U showcase you saw had Carson Bowen, a great catcher, who's a TCU commit, Justin Crawford, Perfect game All-American. Dominic Hellman, perfect game All-American. David Horn, who's going to Vanderbilt. And 23, Dean West, who's a UCLA commit. Talk about making a great choice, jumping into perfect game to start things. Perfect game was fortunate. All those athletes were there. Joining us now, National Scouting Director Brian Sikowski. And Brian, we're going to get your insights on one player. You good with that, Mikey? Just only Mikey? Yep, that, let's do it. <laughs> All right, so that list of players I gave you tells you that was a heck of a West Regional 14U Showcase when you guys started to lay eyes on Mikey back then at 14 years old, what were the initial thoughts? What made you pause and watch him more? Uh, at that age, it's it's so much more about identifying traits than it is identifying ability necessarily. 
Uh, and one of the things that we look for specifically is, is bat to ball skills, is natural bat to ball skills. And Mikey had that. And Mikey, like a lot of other SoCal kids, uh, was really advanced with his hands defensively at a young age too. And that's another trait. Uh, and he's got the, the actions and the hands and the arm to play in the middle infield. Wanted to see sort of that twitch expand, that like explosive first movement sort of thing get better uh, to see if he's really got a chance to play short. Maybe he's a second baseman, whatever. Knew he could hit, didn't know how much power there was going to be. Needed to see him get stronger, needed to see him impact the ball a little bit harder. He always found the barrel, but not a ton of it was with juice. So we wanted to see that. You know, you can project size, you can project strength, you can project athleticism and power and all the above. But if you ID those traits early enough, then like now we have the makings of someone who may be eventually become a first round prospect. And that's what Mikey Romero is. He might be a first round prospect. Your touch and feel on the human side of the athletes is always welcome on this show. So step back and be inclusive of his entire family. And how unique is it from your eyes? You see so many gifted players to understand who his sisters are, what they accomplished in the sport. Younger sister Sophia may do the same thing. How unique for you is that? It's incredible. Anytime that you can identify an athlete and then evaluate an athlete who comes from an environment that is nothing but positive for his development, that competitiveness, the the world-class older sisters in softball. you telling me that didn't help Mikey Romero become a better baseball player? Of course it did. Uh, so to, to grow up in that sort of competitive environment, that sort of get better every single day environment, because guess what? Your sisters are. Um, I think that's done nothing but help them, and it's so fun to watch. Brian, thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Seth. Brian's insights, incredible. Vinny Servino as well. And Jeremy Brown joining us. Three great scouts. Check out all their work. Well, all over the place, but start at Perfect Game Platforms and PerfectGame.org. If you like what you've seen on regional television, then thanks for spending a half hour with us. You can download it onto your smart device. Go find Perfect Game TV. Put it on that smart device. We're like this 24-7. Weekly shows, live events, college level, softball as well. Perfect Game TV. Perfect Game Weekly, presented by Rawlings. We'll see you soon at the ballpark.